Welcome to another episode on the Lara Poe. This is episode 38. Today I am going to discuss the topic of why you should never speak to a police officer or the police in general during an investigation without the benefit of an attorney. Now, if you are contacted by the police or a police officer, for any reason you should quickly establish whether you are the subject of an investigation or whether the police merely wish to speak to you to ascertain certain information if you are the subject of the investigation police in accordance with the judge's rules are to caution you in other words they are to say to you that you are not obliged to say anything unless you wish to do so but anything you say may be used as evidence against you in that case you should exercise your constitutional right to remain silent and the only requirement in law in my respectful submission is to give the police officer your name and address after you suggest zip it if you are not the subject of the investigation and you are not a suspect in the matter then you could respectfully decline to speak to the police officer and if he or she insists then respectfully and gently you could ask the police to take a hike in the park or a swim in the deepest lake I'll be back to discuss this matter in depth but before i do so my disclaimer this is not a welcome back section five one of the Thompson K7 Constitution protects citizens from arbitrary arrest and detention. And section 5 1 subsection E states that the police will only arrest and detain a person on reasonable suspicion that an offense is committed or a criminal offense is about to be committed absent that the police has no right to arrest or to detain subsection 4 of section 5 guarantees every citizen arrested or in police detention the right to a legal representation of their choice and section 5 5 guarantees every citizen the right to remain silent save in my respectful submission giving the police your name and address now why do i say that a person coming in contact with the police who is the subject of a criminal investigation should remain silent well it's because anything that that person says by way of trying to explain or justify the actions 
could be used as evidence against them. Alternatively, the police are known to lie. They will misconstrued, misinterpret what the person said, twist it in order to use it as evidence against that individual. The police main aim when questioning a suspect in a criminal matter is to elicit a confession is to have that person to incriminate his or her self. The Constitution of the Talks and Kicks Islands protects a person in police custody from self-incrimination by guaranteeing him right to remain silent in the face of police questioning. So if one comes in contact with the police as a suspect, one should invoke right to silence and secondly one should request to have a lawyer of their choice once that person invoke his right to silence and once he requests an attorney to be present the police should stop questioning that person until that person has obtain legal advice now in the second category where the person is not a suspect or the person is not the subject of the police investigation there is no legal obligation on that person to speak to the, the police police has no powers to arrest that person and the police have no power to detain that person so let me be clear if you are not a suspect you are not arrested on suspicion a suspicion of committing an offense you have no obligation to speak to the police so if the police or a police officer comes up to you and want to speak to you, you're entitled to walk away. And if he attempts or try to detain you, then that police officer has assaulted you, has committed assault and battery, probably unlawful detention and false imprisonment, and is subject to the penalty of the law. Now, in 1984, in the case of Collins versus Wilcock, the police wish to question a woman in relation to alleged activity of prostitution. The woman walked away, but the police officer was intent on stopping her and in order to do so, grabbed her arm in order to prevent her from walking away. The police had no authority, no powers to detain the woman. The woman struggled with the officer and scratched him. She was charged with assault on a police officer in the course of his duty. The woman was convicted and appealed to the Court of Appeal. The issue in the case was whether the conviction for assaulting the police officer was lawful given the lack of a legal authority and part of the police to restrain the woman. The decision. It was held that the police officer was acting outside the scope of his powers as he had no power to arrest the woman in that situation and therefore was acting outside the scope of his duties as a police officer. There was no question therefore of assaulting the police officer in the course of his duty. It was held further that grabbing on the part of the police without the power to make an arrest amounted to an unlawful assault, a battery. The woman had been entitled to resist as an action of self-defense. Her conviction was therefore overturned. 
and there you have it viewers if you are confronted with such situation you could walk away you could ignore the police officer if the police officer try to restrain you or detain you that officer has violated your constitutional rights to be free from arbitrary arrest and detention and you can bring an action against the police officer now here is where i will leave it for today thank you for watching i will see you in another episode